Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'm down at the Metrodome where the Alexandria Cardinals just took the field. And if they want to get into this year's state championship game, they will have to shut down the undefeated and top-ranked Eden Prairie Eagles. We know that one team will be representing the KSAX KRWF viewing area in this year's Class C State Amateur Baseball Championship. We don't know who it is yet, as the Lonsdale Aces await the winner of today's playoff game between the Granite Falls Kilowatts and the Watkins Clippers. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'm live in Morris, where I'm joined by the District 11A state representative candidate. He's a Republican, Tory Westrom. Tory, first off, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule this evening and talking to us about this year's election. KSAX TV. This is Eyewitness News Morning. Good morning and thanks for tuning in for your area's only local morning update this Monday, December 30th. The time now is 6:10. What a wonderful weekend with temperatures in the 30s, 40s, and even 50s in some parts of the viewing area over the weekend. But the winds out west are whipping up something for the new year. We'll get into that in a second. But first, let's take a live look now at Next Rad Radar. As you can see, there's not much activity out there right now. That, but the game had to be played, and each side sent their 11 best players out onto the field. And that's where Eden Prairie's Steve Lavoie would put the Eagles up early in this one. And from there, they would never look back. Later on in the first half, Henry Barnes would be on the receiving end of this screen pass. And onto the great wide open, he'd go. And with a nice downfield block, into the end zone, he'd go. Then in the second half, Alexandria quarterback Dan Einerson would connect with Jason Erickson. But it seemed every time the Alexander Cardinals looked to get something going, the Eagles would come up with a big hit just like this one. But no tackle hurt Alexandria as bad as this one. As Jason Erickson goes down on the tackle, he dislocates his ankle and would have to be carted off the field. They're not going to war. But they are going to battle as thousands of people lined up to get a ride out to the third annual Sertoma Ice Fishing Challenge. As they prepared to fish for more than $90,000 in cash and prizes, their toughest battle of the day wasn't the fish, it was the weather. It's something to do and uh, what else can you do in the winter time? <laughs> it's a good outdoor sport. The pre-tournament action was all as important as the tournament itself as a record turnout was expected to take to Lake Lahamadu. I think we'll be uh, bigger than we were last year. We're expecting somewhere in that 3,500 to maybe even the 4,000 uh, people showing up. As the more than 3,000 anglers scramble to find their secret fishing hole, what makes theirs better than the next? Well, to get the right area, the right depth where the fish are. The fish aren't all over. You've got to be in the right place on the layout of the lake, on points or whatever. Some places are better than others. By the noon hour, most everyone had their game plan set, and then it happened. Four, three, two, one. And the fishing began, as every fish caught was worth weighing in, with the biggest catch of the day driving home in a brand new pickup. When they run, they run together, be it on the track, or off the track. It's a happy nest of Cardinals when it comes to the Staples Motley's cross country program. I feel we have such a team unity and everybody looks out for everybody and we just have so much fun together. I love cross country here. Um, I'm gonna miss it so much next year. It's, it's a great program, the team is great. We just, the unity on the team is like nothing else, so. Though their coach has never been a runner, he has been able to teach his athletes how to train their minds to overcome their bodies and route to five state championships in the past seven years. I wouldn't doubt him for a second about anything he tells us. Great motivator and teaches us not just things about cross country but also life experiences too. Well, he just knows what he's talking about. He knows his stuff. He's a great coach. I wouldn't, I think he's the best coach out there. I mean, he's a great motivator. He's, he researches this stuff and he knows we know that he knows what he's talking about. Uh, we've become very good friends, all of us do, and that is a lot more fun than even the meets. It's great when you come here and you do well and stuff, and when you win state championships, but the reason that we are successful win state championships is because everybody loves each other. Congratulations to the Staples Motley Boys and Girls Cross Country Program as the KSAX 
Athletes of the Week. Benson woman says she is fine after spending more than 12 hours stranded in her car over the weekend. It was Sunday morning at 3 a.m. as Mary Bates was heading into the town of Benson where she ran into this no trespassing sign on her own driveway, took one wrong turn, which would eventually lead her into those snowdrifts for 12 hours. I left for work about a little after 3 a.m. and I got, didn't even get out of my driveway and um, turned around to come back up and lost my sense of direction and ended up out in the field. Bates was en route to this holiday gas station where she was scheduled to open at 4.30. But as the sun came up that morning, she heard on the radio about her own disappearance. It was then easy for her to make that crucial decision of staying inside her vehicle. About 11 o'clock or so, uh, when the sun started to peek out, you could kind of see the tree, tops of the trees. So I was looking around my surroundings, looking to see where I was at. Um, to find, I have, we have a gravel pit down at the end of my driveway. I was trying to find that. Because if I found my dr uh, the gravel pit, I would be able to see where my driveway is and how far out I was. But I couldn't see that either. She was able to keep her truck running most of the day. But even with the heat, she still found herself bundled up with anything she could find inside her truck. I had uh, packed two uh, pairs of socks that I used for gloves and <laughs> mittens. And um, that pretty much kept me warm. I sat in the back seat, my feet were starting to, when the, electric, uh, when the heater went out, um, my feet were wet and I just very, I just put them underneath the back seat and put some clothes on top and they were kind of warm. I had a leather duffel bag and put that on my lap and that felt, uh, it kept, kept me warm. It wasn't until around 3.30 Sunday afternoon when members of the Benson Snowmobile Club who were making their final pass noticed the half buried truck in the snowdrift. Mary is glad to be back at home and has only a small patch of frostbite on her finger. The Minnesota International Center's International Classroom Connection Program brings students all over Minnesota closer to the world. Today, the program provided local students with valuable first-hand perspectives on other countries' cultures and global issues. Today, students here at Discovery Middle School got a special education from some international guests. Six international speakers gave presentations about their countries and cultures, while students and faculty both listened closely and participated in interactive activities. I'm doing presentation, you see, they are very attentive. You see the sparkle in their eyes. You, you can feel that they really want to know about the things you are talking about, and they always ask wonderful questions. Having international guests in the classroom gives the students a different type of education. We're excited to have uh, guests from uh, various parts of the world today uh, to share with our students uh, their culture, their experiences in, in living in a different country and uh, how our kids can uh, relate to that. Besides giving their presentations, the speakers say they enjoy visiting greater Minnesota communities and learning about life in Minnesota. In Alexandria, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. Many people associate Easter and springtime with a furry little friend. At the pet stop in Alexandria, the hottest item is one of these little guys. Store owner Gary Bush says the week before Easter is the single busiest week of the year. They began the week with over 30 bunnies and have only five left. A main reason so many of these bunnies are hopping out of the store is because of their price. The entire setup for a bunny would probably come to maybe about $70, $75. When you're figuring a cage, the food, the bedding, the water bottle, uh, ceramic dish for you to put the food in, uh, you're normally right up and the cost of the bunny itself. You're probably at about $70, $75. While the bunny is a fun little pet for the whole family to enjoy, there's more to being an owner than just going to the store and picking out the cutest looking one. Read up on it first. Know everything there is to know about it. Um, know some of its likes, dislikes, what kind of foods, what kind of housing it requires, 
um, then you'll be a successful pet owner. While the average life of a bunny is five to six years, and they may grow up to five or six pounds, if you decide a new pet might be too much work, you can always settle for an oversized stuffed bunny. In Alexandria, Drew Keel, KSAX, Eyewitness News. At the age of 17, Officer Dave Rodal began his career with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. He has spent countless conversations with fellow outdoorsmen, but his role is different than most others. It's our job and responsibility to see to it that they do have the licenses and are staying within the limits of the law. Usually through our conversation with them, they become very relaxed very quickly. Officer Rodal is the conservation officer for the Sauk Center Field Service, who last year received the Wetlands Conservation Officer of the Year. And this year, he is the proud recipient of the Minnesota Conservation Officer of the Year. It's an award that goes to an officer that's displayed over his career, uh, what the division considers to be outstanding work on the job and off the job. And it's not just about writing tickets, it's about all the public relations things we do, the school presentations we do, uh, meeting with the sportsmen's clubs, and off work, it's being involved in the community, involved in the churches and other organizations, and involved with the family. As a husband and father of three, who works more than 60 hours a week, Rodal and his family would like to thank those who acknowledge and honor his work. Um, I thank the people of Minnesota because it is a great, great honor, and it's also a great honor for me to do what I do. To have a job that I enjoy this much and be able to do it every day like this is just tremendous. In Alexandria, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. A small town in west central Minnesota, known as Irrigation Country, is making a big hit in a billion dollar business. Glacial Wood Products has been one of the largest custom churning companies in the nation for the past 12 years. Now they're becoming a hit with baseball players of all ages, from around the nation to right here in Bruton. There really isn't any uh, PR work that's necessary on our part at this point, simply because we've got people walking through the door quicker than we can usually deal with them. So. Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, and Ken Griffey Jr. are just a small sample of the big names who have been placing orders through the Tough Bats company website. www.toughbats.com is where you can order these bats right off the internet. But Tough Bats co-owner David Domzik doesn't want to be known just for the big names using their bats, but for the quality of the X-Bat itself. Uh, we do about a three to four week lead time for a custom made bat, and that is both the, uh, the length and the weight of the bat, barrel and handle color, and customization with a uh, free name inscription on the bat. We'll put your name on the bat as well. Each X-Bat is made of select hard maple or sugar maple, which may last two to three times longer than the traditional ash bat. In Bruton, Drew Keel, KSAX Eyewitness News. A small company in a town of less than 650 people is making a major impact on baseball leagues everywhere. Glacial Wood Productions, located in Bruton, has been making expat for only four months, but many people are seeing the impact they have on baseball players everywhere. For $60, you can get your own personalized wooden baseball bat. But what makes these bats any different than the others? We get in a rough, a rough block piece of wood, roughly three inches square by 36 inches long. Uh, run it through a machine that planes all four sides. Um, then it goes into a lathe where it's the, the shape of the bat's produced. Then it goes into some automatic sanding equipment. And then it's weighted. The end is bored out <clears throat> to produce the weight required. Then it goes to our cabinet uh, shop division in Greenwald, Heritage Cabinetry where we make custom cabinetry and they apply the stain and the finishes and the labeling. Uh, it comes back to Bruton. We uh, inventory it, ship it direct to the customer and um, 
that's the end of a happy story. Numerous Major League Baseball players have been picking up these bats ever since the beginning of spring training. But with the snow melting around here, local baseball teams have been eager to get out themselves and use the expat. They look pretty sharp and got interested and brought a bunch of guys from our team down to look at them and they kind of fell in love with them so we ordered we were gonna order three dozen and by the time we we're done we ordered 50 tools. In Bruton, Drew Keel, KSAX Eyewitness News. Getting older, it's a fact of life. Growing old can be a difficult time. The kids don't stop by as often. Your home is extra quiet. And your body is aching in places you never knew it could hurt. We are all going to get older. It's inevitable. Retirement is a time when things are supposed to slow down. They don't have to. Why not spend your time having fun while being active? Today we visited Long Prairie Memorial Hospital to learn more about adult day services a program for seniors who wanted to stay busy while being surrounded by others. So their loved ones don't have to, you know, be there seven days a week for them always. They get that break and the resident gets a nice opportunity to be outside of their home and being with some friends, that's what we hope this is. Seniors can take part in this program Monday through Friday. A typical day begins at 8.30 and guests stay until mid-afternoon. Throughout the day, seniors participate in a variety of activities, including exercise classes, music programs, where visitors may choose to spend their time getting a little rest and relaxation. While the focus of the program is on fun, some seniors count on the day services program because they don't want to be home alone during the day. I'd be at home 12, 13 hours without anybody there. And there's been a few times I've fallen and they've figured that it would take better chance that if I was around people. So who should become involved in day services? The perfect candidate is somebody that's either living alone or with their family and that they really need the extra help with the nutrition because we give them their meals or the extra help with uh, socialization. They may be isolated in their home or even their family's home. Long Prairie is not the only facility to offer day programs. Contact your nursing home or health care provider for details about similar programs in your area. In Long Prairie, Drew Keel, KSAX Eyewitness News. Swanville has spent the past two years without a cafe. Today marks the beginning of a new era. Residents of Swanville and surrounding communities are once again able to enjoy a quiet conversation over a warm cup of coffee. They help celebrate the opening of Granny's Cafe in downtown Swanville. I mean, that will be a big plus to the community. That will. People have been talking about that. It's a good, nice to have one coming back into Swanville again. It's just so cheery, you know? The wallpaper and the, and the old photos and everything. It's just, I think it's super. Super, supper, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever it may be, this cafe going to be a great addition to Swanville's economy. Having a cafe like this in town just adds to the economy of the town, brings them another excuse to come into town, and it's good for everybody. The cafe has been open for less than a week, and shareholder Bruce Johnson says business has been great, but he and his co-workers are learning a lot in their latest venture. we got a lot of new help in here, so we're not real speedy yet, but just to bear with us and give it time, but I think they come here, it might take a little longer to get served but I think they're really going to enjoy the food. During lunch hour, people are able to get in and out with convenient lunch specials, and during supper, cafe has been filling up. As you can see, Granny's is a very popular place. Now that I got myself a seat, I got to try the food in Swanville, Drew Keel, KSAX Eyewitness News. With five campuses serving over 4,000 students per semester, there are many people affected by the recent announcement of Northwest Technical College's President Ronald Swanson's resignation. Staff of the Chancellor of Minnesota State Colleges and University Systems wrapped up their week-long tour of Northwest Technical Colleges listening to concerns regarding the future of the college. The number one theme that we've heard is the importance of technical education to the people of Northwestern Minnesota, how important it is that these campuses uh, provide a high quality uh, education to the students 
in the area. Some changes that you might see really are going to be in how things operate or how the structure is. Maybe hopefully what we'll see are some answers that we can find a little bit quicker. Hopefully we'll see some services to students a little closer to home. The week-long tour of the Chancellor's staff offered listening sessions where students, faculty, and members of the community were able to share their concerns regarding their technical college. We need to sit down and communicate and um, have things go as smooth as we can. We're an education facility and that's what we need to do. The programming will stay the same. This has everything to do with the structure of the colleges, how the campuses are organized, and the structure of administration. It will not affect student learning or student outcomes at all. With the current president, Robert Swanson's term ending June 30th, students, faculty, and members of the community are meeting now to discuss what lies ahead in the future for Northwest Technical College. In Wadena, Drew Keogh, KSAX, Eyewitness News. Once the red ribbon was cut, it was finally time to check out Brainerd's newest addition. Brainerd's family YMCA spent over $4 million on an expansion that doubled its size. I think this is a fabulous thing for the community, the entire lakes area. Uh, our intent was to provide a facility that would become a community gathering place, if you will, for people with special needs, for single parent families, for senior citizens, and of course for kids and their families. And I think we've done that. The new addition features a kid's castle area, fitness studio, and the prize gem, a new aquatic center with a water slide. I think that it shows a lot of community involvement. Um, the fundraising came from a lot of different sources. It wasn't just one group of people. Many people contributed. Many people gave their time to help um, move equipment, do painting in certain areas, do cleaning. Um, so I think that there was a lot of community involvement because they know how important it is to have the why. After more than five years of planning and hundreds of donations, it's easy to see how the members of this community are the winners in this deal. In Brainerd, Drew Keogh, KSX, Eyewitness News. The Little Falls School District, in conjunction with the Minnesota Fishing Museum and Education Center, is giving a group of Argentinian students a chance to explore Minnesota while Little Falls gets a little exposure to a new culture. To be able to work with people from another culture uh, in another language and to share not only our culture but also our concerns with environment, uh, it fits very, very nicely the, the model of what we are trying to do here in Little Falls. Aquatech is a program where the students collect water samples from various Morrison County lakes and rivers. The students then return to the Minnesota Fishing Museum where they conduct water quality tests. What I like is to investigate uh, all the rivers and see which fish the, the quality of the water. We got to see many rivers and you know the biology and stuff. And I don't know, it's kind of fun. Program director Wayne Teichel is a retired Little Falls teacher. He enjoys working with Argentinian students. I really enjoy uh, learning about the cultures and the educational systems that they that they have, and seeing where they're similar, seeing where they're different. But uh, good kids, interested kids are the same, whether they're American or whether they're European, Asian, or in this case, Argentinian. And it's been a good experience for me. The information gathered here by this project at the Swan River will be used by the DNR statewide, in addition to other government agencies inside of Morrison County. In Sobieski, Drew Keo KSAX, Eyewitness News. Doctor has been notified of Brainerd. Just one of all died. 10-4 will do. Yeah, that's I won't think twice before saying no. It's kind of scary because you don't, you don't really know what it's like, and then you see this, and it's, it's really scary. I feel it's a very important part of my job as a mother to try to relate to these kids the heartache and the tragedy that becomes from um, a drunk, a drinking and driving.
chaotic. And that, I was saying, I was um, saying this last year, this week was entirely chaotic. Same with... Um, it was really exciting. Probably one of the highlights of my life. It was a great experience. We met a lot of famous people, people that won the Nobel Prize and um, other, pe other awards. We met uh, Intel executives, and Intel sponsors here. And we had a great time. I met a lot of new people, made a lot of friends there. We started uh, Saturday morning and started from the slab up and we almost have all the roof trust up and the outside walls are up at this point. It's a blessing to help folks that uh, want to build a church and do not have the resources and we furnish the, the labor. What began a dream today became reality. Well, you know, it was really special. Uh, you know, a small group of local folks from Park Rapids came down five years ago. No one ever gave us a prayer of getting this passed. And so it's a, it's a highlight for me. This is my hometown. The first meeting that we had way back in 1990, I wondered if it would ever get going. But we just kept on trying and trying and working and working. And after years of hard work, today was the day Senator Tony Kinkle handed over a $100,000 check to Glennis Holzer complete the funding of the All Veterans Memorial at Park Rapids. I'm the only one left of the original committee that started this way back when. And what is it like today? How do oh, you feel? It's the happiest day for many, many years in my life. So why Park Rapids? Park Rapids is a hub for veterans. We have a lot of uh, retirees move to our community and a lot of retirees are veterans. They're retiring, moving back to Park Rapids, moving to Park Rapids from other parts of the country. So after 11 years of planning and funding finally in place, construction on this new memorial should begin next month with hopes of celebrating a grand opening July 4th, 2003. In Park Rapids, Drew Keough, KSAX Eyewitness News. A grass fire in Brainerd is, for the most part, under control. A couple days ago we had our active running fire, and then yesterday and today we're in a mop-up mode on this fire, trying to put it out to make sure it's completely out so we can go on and do other things. Since Friday, the blaze has devastated more than 700 acres, demolishing two homes and multiple other structures. This weekend, hundreds of workers did their part to extinguish the flames but some fires continue to burn. Uh, we're calling it 80% contained. There's still hot spots in it. We've got a strong wind again today, which is uh, causing some threats, but basically the fire is contained within uh, control lines, and now the crews are in, in the process of putting the fire out. Authorities continue to investigate if the fire was caused by teenagers using fireworks, but no matter what the cause, officials say conditions were right for something like this to happen. Firefighting crews are still on alert through northern Minnesota because of the dry conditions. Uh, it's kind of deceiving. The grass and the lawns look green, and so you think, well, fire season's over. Well, it's not. Uh, it was a late spring. We've also had very little precipitation in northern Minnesota, so conditions are very dry. And that's why we had a fire like we had uh, the other day here in Brainerd and then also by uh, Moose Lake the day before. Authorities say the fire is mainly under control. However, with very high winds and fire risk being considered very high. They will continue to watch this fire over the next several days. In Brainerd, Sarah Casello, KSAX Eyewitness News. Flying. It's often something we dream about, but besides hopping on a 747 out of the Twin Cities, it rarely becomes a reality. Well, not for this group. This weekend, airplane enthusiasts flew into Fergus Falls for the annual fly-in, drive-in breakfast at the airport. For many of those at the event, flying has been something they wanted to do since childhood. William Sealhammer first became interested in aviation right here at the Fergus Falls Airport. And we would stop there with our parents and uh, climb on that airplane. So that, I guess the same thing that I'm doing here today by allowing the younger kids to climb on the helicopter that we have brought here from the guard. You didn't need a pilot's license to attend this event. And even if airplanes aren't your thing, there was still plenty to see. And they bring some of the different airplanes in from uh, 
some of the collector planes and uh, float planes and some of the different uh, things that's just fun to see. Aviation toys is the big thing, the plastic models, but we get into the memorabilia, the pictures, the books, the videotapes, that type of thing. In, in it's all aviation, it's all memorabilia. Around 800 people attended this event. High winds prevented many people from taking to the air, but not me. After a little convincing, I even took to the skies. Reporting in Fergus Falls, Sarah Cancello, KSAX Eyewitness News. West Central Minnesota Communities Action has been helping seniors over the age of 60 for more than 30 years. The program is set up as an injury control program to help uh, frail and elderly remain independent in their homes. We uh, focus on, on safety and health. The latest venture by the Frail and Elderly Program has been to deliver used air conditioners to the homes of seniors who need a break from the heat. A lot of a lot of the clients are immobile, where you know they're in walkers or in canes, or um, they can't go out and sit by a lake. So what we do here is we take an old air conditioner and clean it up, make sure it works, just to double check, and then bring it to an elderly client or have them come and pick it up. With summer less than a month away and temperatures quickly on the rise, these used air conditioners are becoming a hot item for elderly people. So if your air conditioner is out of a job but still in working condition, you can contact the number you see on your screen. In Elbow Lake, Drew Keo, KSX, Eyewitness News. A company in West Central Minnesota is now playing an important role in the state of Minnesota's fight against terrorism. We go on spills one spill a week and, and they're all chemical related. And so there, we, we have them all the time. We, there it might be in a semi, uh, back of a, a truck, might be at a bulk site, uh, might be in a basement of a fuel oil spill. We have chemical releases all the time. This kind of experience is what allowed West Central Environmental Consultants to become one of the state's 11 chemical assessment teams. Any kind of release or volume of release is very dependent on where it's located um, from a risk-based perspective on where people are, wells, surface water. Um, a small spill uh, near a surface water body can have a lot bigger effect than a large spill that's not near any risks. The number one risk is of course the life of humans. So what makes the threat of everyday chemicals so disturbing? Terrorism is intentional acts to instill fear in the population. Um, there's always a risk being present of hazardous materials being present. The best thing a person can do to prepare themselves is to become educated. So after spending the day with West Central Minnesota's Hazardous Materials Chemical Assessment Team, I've learned that what we know the least about, we fear the most. In Morris, Drew Keo, KSX, Eyewitness News. Many of us eat fish because it's known as a healthy type of meat. But are you aware of the heavy metallic chemical that is a hazard to your health? Because it is good for you. We, I like to try and have uh, less red meat and eat more chicken and fish because that's what they tell us, that it's good for you. The fishing season has started off slow, but it's picked up now. And it's a good reminder that uh, people need to be aware that there is some potential health hazard uh, from uh, eating fish. The thrill of bringing home a trophy-sized fish often causes anglers to forget about the risks mercury poses to their health. I'd like to catch a big walleye <laughs> or a big bass. I think it's fun to catch the big fish. It's true. That's, that's the kind of the quandary of uh, a sport fisher. Everybody wants to catch those bigger, larger fish. Uh, perhaps maybe they should enjoy catch and release in that situation and eat some of the younger fish. Keep some of the younger fish that uh, have had less total time to accumulate those contaminants in their system. So what are some of the signs of too much mercury in someone's system? Blindness, reproductive failures, uh, uh, major nervous system damages uh, uh, caused by the amount of uh, mercury they're intaking, intake from, um, from fish. Well, definitely I would. If, if there's danger in bigger fish and mercury, then I'd much rather have the smaller ones with the smaller amounts. So while catching a big fish might be fun, and cleaning one fish is probably easier than cleaning four, 
I think it's safe to say the smaller fish are the healthier ones to eat. In Glenwood, Drew Keo, KSX, Eyewitness News. They're young, fast, and don't even have a license. But they do have their own set of wheels. I have a lot of confidence in myself. I believe that I can win. You get to basically teach the kids, you know, the right thing to do on racing. I normally come here, we work on the track and on the cart. Uh, we do hot laps and like gear up, fix whatever we have to, and then we start racing. A lot of work goes into getting these carts on the track each week. What's the secret about picking the right number for your cart? My sister's cart number is 81, so I like to be like her. Do you like racing? Yeah, I love it. There's no money exchanging hands during these races. The racers seem to be taking a lot of pride in just winning. We do two heat races and we do a feature. And the feature is, if you win the feature, you get a trophy. I want to uh, win a trophy for my dad. In Glenwood, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. When authorities in Todd County received a child custody phone call last Friday night, they never assumed what would happen next. Uh, when the officers arrived to check on the status, just to check with the father to see why he hadn't brought the child back, they obviously discovered the two bodies in the, in the truck in the garage, and um, officers uh, had to break entry to gain, gain entrance to the garage because it was locked. Community professionals uh, from law enforcement, uh, community corrections, uh, the medical community, uh, even business employers who may be sensitive to the uh, issue of domestic violence. Uh, we work with anybody who has an interest uh, and wants to see violence uh, cease and discontinue in our community. Child custody cases are nothing new to local law enforcement agencies, but it seems far too many turn into deadly power struggles. The strongest emotional tie that a parent would have uh, is that w with his or her child. And so the uh, perpetrator, uh, the perpetrator of violence will often use that child um, as a tool, as an agent to inflict pain upon the other person. And it's a pattern that we see happen over and over and over again. And that's exactly what Todd County officials dealt with last Friday. The, we're told that the father had made some comments about uh, suicide in, in uh, previous encounters with, with the wife or I should say uh, girlfriend. And um, so uh, obviously the, in these situations, that's not unusual though because in custody and visitation situations, uh, threats are made back and forth and police deal with that on, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's nothing new and many people have had to deal with similar situations. But what can you look for in someone who's in trouble? The person is frightened, uh, they've been intimidated, they've been oppressed and uh, they will withdraw from friends and family. So whatever the situation may be, if you think there's trouble, don't ignore it, or it may turn into something you never expected. In Long Prairie, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. Once Senator Tony Kinkle handed over a $100,000 check to complete the funding for an all-veterans memorial in Park Rapids, the next step was to make what began a dream, reality. We're different. Okay, it's the ones that are going up, it's like for the Marines, for World War II, it's for Vietnam, it's for these. One item for the memorial. Our memorial will encompass all the wars. Members of the community believe a new memorial will eventually become a cornerstone for a city that sees a lot of tourist traffic. They go out and they go to Lake Itasca and see the park and they run up to Bemidji to see Paul Bunyan and to Akeley to see the other big Paul Bunyan and other things within the area, but their headquarters is going to be here. It would uh, show how our veterans are being taken care of and to uh, let everyone know that we appreciate what the veterans has done to our state of Minnesota and even the United States. 
July 4th, 2003 is the tentative date for the grand opening celebration of Park Rapids All Veterans Memorial, but veterans don't have to wait that long to be honored by their family and friends. My children, my uh, grandchildren, they all bought me a nice stone, paid for it already, and I, I appreciate that. In Park Rapids, Drew Keo KSX, Eyewitness News. Tiger Woods, Tom Lehman, and Tom Dolby. That's right, Greystone golf pro Tom Dolby was among the top 25 golfers at this year's PGA Club Professionals Tournament at Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky, which puts him in an elite class of golfers. There's about 3,000 club pros across the country that try, and only 25 wind up by going to the PGA, so uh, to be one of those 25 is, uh, you know, it's real special. and. Uh, you know, we feel that, uh, you know, we're sort of playing for the honor of the PGA Club Pro and uh, to, uh, to play at home is even more special. According to Tom, it is the first time in history there have been seven Minnesota pros in the PGA Championship. But he's well aware that there may easily be another historical story unfolding at this year's PGA Championship next month. I, I hope Tiger wins the British Open just because I think it's going to add so much atmosphere and drama to the PGA here that uh, uh, to be a part of that and uh, hopefully to be near it would be a, a thrill of a lifetime. It's something that uh, if Tiger has a chance for the slam, it would probably be the largest sporting spectacle of our lifetime. Uh, I mean, it's going to be larger than any Super Bowl or any World Series uh, because it's going to be such a worldwide event. Like Tom said, I don't think the golf world knows what they're in for. Tiger Woods wins the British Open next weekend. Tom Dolby and the state of Minnesota will be part of history as the PGA Championship will be decided August 18th in the state of Minnesota. At the Greystone Golf Course in Sox Center, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. Last night, severe weather was expected to bring much needed rain to many farming communities. But for one town, it was a fire, not the rain that people monitored throughout the night. I was in the house with my family and the lights had been flickering a little bit and we had heard that there was a storm coming in so I said kids you know shut down the computer but lightning must be striking here the, the power is going out. So um, my one son went outside and the neighbor gal actually across the street um, had called 911 because she had her husband come out and look and um, you could see the cords or the lines going into the feed mill were on fire and crackling and snapping and on fire. And right then then the fire truck started pulling up. It was 6-11 last night when Belgrade's fire department received an automatic page from the Belgrade Milling Company's feed mill in downtown Belgrade. Less than 10 minutes later, word began to spread that help was definitely going to be needed. It wasn't long until there were a total of seven fire departments and the Candy Ohio Civil Defense Team joining the Belgrade Fire Department in a battle that would run into the wee hours of the morning. We ended up with uh, approximately uh, 140 personnel working because of the fire from other departments. Uh, we had, I believe, seven other departments here. Uh, the Bruton Ambulance was standing by. Uh, we just, we had a lot of people here and a lot of rigs. We had approximately 40 rigs out here. The damage is much worse than it appears from the outside. On the inside, the mill is severely damaged from the smoke and the fire that continued to bill out the top of the silos for several hours. We had it totally under control. I'm, I'm, I, lost time last night of course over that many hours but I'm guessing we had it pretty much totally under control around the two o'clock in the morning. The mill is not completely destroyed and the future of the mill is unknown at this time but what is known is the town of Belgrade is seeing a change of pace after the fire. It's totally quiet here yeah usually there's big big feed trucks big semis rolling up and down the street and right now it's just quiet it's it's just kind of weird you look over there it's just it's dark it's sad. The Morris Police Department recently stepped up their fight against drugs in their high schools by adding a drug-sniffing dog to their force and a liaison officer at the high school. But some Morris High School students are lending their own services to create a drug and alcohol-free environment for their fellow students. I enjoy helping my community because at first we're bored and I wanted to do something about it and help my friends out. Mary recently received national recognition for her hundreds of hours volunteered to help get the teen center up and running. It wasn't too long before several friends and even some family members got involved. 
my sister and my mom first started it, and they thought about it, and then I just got involved because, you know, she's my sister, and we're both the same age, and we both wanted a place to go that was dry and alcohol-free. There's really not too much to do with the kids in town, and they've been kind of getting in mischievous trouble or trouble around town, and they wanted just a fun place to go, so they thought they would try to create a place designed by the teens and ran by the teens to have a drug and alcohol-free place to go. Providing free entertainment in a drug and alcohol-free environment is something many communities dream of, but it's not an easy task to wrestle. To have a place like this when my kids were small, I'd have been happier than heck to know that after school, they're down at the teen center having a good time. They're hanging around with good kids, kids their own age. No drugs, no beard, no ugly people hanging around. There's only good people hanging around here at the teen center. Portions of the money raised from Rock and Roll Wrestling's performance August 16th will help fund the teen center's drug and alcohol free environment, which has plans to be open after school hours this fall from 3.30 to 8, Monday through Friday. In Morris, Drew Keo, KSAX, Eyewitness News. Every Wednesday now for 22 years, folks have come from miles around to feast upon bottomless bowls of smoked bologna. It's kind of a very unique thing. People just come to have a day out, play cards a little bit, something to do. Five bucks buys you a paper plate, plastic fork, and a bunch of bologna with horseradish on the side. Oh, I tell you, the drinks are good, the bologna and the atmosphere is great. Bartenders are crazy. That's why we come down here just to see them. <laughs> a little live music, and once in a while, a rooster cruises by. You want a bologna? <laughs> <laughs> he likes bologna too, the rooster. <laughs> but you can't beat the lunch hour atmosphere. It's a fun thing to do in the winter, and any time. We come here all year. Thank you. Every Wednesday here at the Red Rooster, you can find bologna day. On average, they go through 120 rings of bologna and play host to over 300 customers, some even as far as Emily. How about an hour and six minutes, huh? Hour and six minutes. An hour and six minutes, and that's driving the speed limit. People say they come for the bologna, but it's the charm of the owner and his staff that keep them coming back. I like to come here. And so my husband took me for our anniversary, believe it or not. We do other things, but this, this today we came here. We just come and have a good time. That's what it is all about. We got to have a good time. In Genola, Drew Keo, KSX Eyewitness News.
Coming off a season which featured both the boys and the girls golf teams making it to state, the Alexandria Golf Program lost a few golfers to graduation, but over the years they've been able to create an abundance of replacements for a golf program that continues to grow. It just seems like the kids are younger and younger all the time that are playing the game, and they're not only younger, but they're out there playing it a lot. A recent visit from PGA Tour pro Matt Gogol may have been just what Alexandria's golf program needs so that's the only to develop into a hotbed for golf talent. You know, this town's produced one Tom Lehman, it certainly can produce a uh, Tom Lehman Jr. boy or girl. So uh, I'd look for uh, you know, the, the money to help the programs and uh, hopefully they'll uh, become state contenders. The state championship isn't a guarantee, but the $4,000 raised by the Gogol Golf Clinic is. It's also an opportunity not often presented to a nonprofit high school athletic program. I would call it very unique. Uh, when, when this was first brought to me in about April, I thought, well, I, the clinic part sounds nice. I'm glad he's willing to do it, but how are we going to put it together to try and raise money for it? As Gogol displayed his talents, onlookers of all ages tried to pick up on a few pointers while keeping their own game in mind. Well, they weren't the only ones that had their jaws open. I had my jaw open. I just love to watch these, these pros hit a golf ball because, you know, we all can hit a golf ball once about every 10 or 12, 15, 20 shots, but to watch them hit it over and over and over again. And that's exactly what Gogol did. Over and over again for the audience, hoping to create a passion for the game just like his own. It's great to go out to the tournaments now and to see how many kids show up. It's, uh, it's where the game will grow, and I think that the more exposure the kids get to golf, the, get, the better the game will be. While the $4,000 Matt Gogol helped raise may often be outdriven by the millions Matt and his PGA peers play for each season, it will do wonders for an Alexandria golf program that has made several appearances in the state tournament over the past few years. At the Miltona Golf Club, Drew Keo KSX, Eyewitness News. As the tree turned green and the track turned black, Brainerd's International Raceway stands remain packed all throughout the weekend where top fuel dragsters and funny cars were among those racing the strip. For the 21st annual NHRA Nationals. It's a rush. Um, and the adrenaline, it's indescribable. It just, we really enjoy it. Many would even consider calling it a rush an understatement. It's just an instant and they're gone, you know. It's just the, the total power of it. I don't know, I can't explain it. I... There's no question these fans are getting their money's worth sitting in the stands rather than on their couch. You have to see it in person. You, 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 can't, uh, you can't get that on television. I... It goes through your whole body. I mean, you can feel it. You not only can hear it, but you can feel it. And feel it you can as the funny cars and top fuel dragsters Raced out Brainerd's International Raceway, they rumble everything in its path, including myself and my camera. In Brainerd, Drew Keo KSX, Eyewitness News. The wildlife will soon call it home, but for this group of families, it will act as a place to forever remember those they've lost, in a way they'll never forget. This is unusual in that these are memorial donations that were sent into the state office in St. Paul uh, in memory of loved ones. Pheasant hunter Jim Tyvan lost his son to a snowmobile accident nine years ago. Today, he's honored to be part of such a unique ceremony. I'm really honored. I think it's uh, uh, no better tribute to a, a hunter or fellow hunter or, or uh, wildlife uh, uh, enthusiast and uh, I think it's just great and I hope it never ever ends. The 77 acre wildlife management area will last forever for those families who donated the funds and for those who will soon call it home. It's going to provide, uh, definitely provide production uh, benefits for deer and pheasants and, uh, and waterfowl. For KSAX Eyewitness News, Drew Keel near Pennock. As a kid, he looked up to sharpshooting Herb Parsons, and now he's the idol everyone is watching. It's been a long road for this well-traveled marksman, 
He began his shooting days at age nine. I started this thing as a passion as a young boy. I had a little BB gun, I had an ugly dog, and I couldn't get enough of either one of them. So as time, as time went on, I, uh, my passion for target shooting and hunting grew into an obsession. Up in mid -air here. One more egg. From golf balls to aspirin, as a magician can pull a rabbit out of his hat, Tom Knapp can fuck a chicken with a handy dandy super duper cotton picking chicken gun as he shoots his gun in ways they really weren't meant to be shot. A sight to see, and a marksman who isn't afraid to share his secrets. I hunt once in a while, but you gotta understand that uh, wild birds and wild game are not the same as prescribed exhibition targets. I, pre I present these targets for myself so they're easier to hit. Uh, if there was a trick in anything that I do here, it's the way I throw those targets and present them to myself. And it seems he presented himself with a nice set of clay pigeons as he tried to tie his European record of shooting nine clay pigeons in less than two seconds. In Dalton for KSAX KRWF Eyewitness News, Drew Keo. Some consider it an expression, some consider it a statement. Whatever it is, Minnesota motorists have been having fun with personalized license plates for 25 years. Uh, I just think it's neat that you can get them. It's a, you know, I got about three or four cars with them. Many people uh, use it to describe their vehicle. It might have an older vehicle and they like to have the description on there. Um, it's making a statement. Or a lot of people like to describe their hobbies. As long as it's not vulgar, offensive, or a shot at free advertisement, the state allows you to express your interests or your passions on your license plates. I think people get personalized license plates to uh, either bring attention to themselves or to give somebody a smile during the day. And uh, as you can see with my license plate, when you fix DK, DK can be tooth decay, and that's something that can make people smile. This one here on the Suburban says uh, GMR. It's Gloria Marie Ruffman. That's my wife. So I just got that for her. With more cars hitting the road every day, the state has recently created a new license plate that has been a big seller with motorists across the state. The critical habitat plates are really popular, especially our loon plate that has just come out this year. They're so popular right now that they're remaking them. The new plates have been available for the past five years. They're a great idea to help preserve the future of the land that so many of us cherish. A lot of people like the personalized plate and, you know, I think um, the interest in the DNR and preserving our wetlands and that type of thing is very important. On the road in Alexandria with photographer Ben Kroll, Drew Keel, Eyewitness News. When they run, they run together, be it on the track or off the track. It's a happy nest of cardinals when it comes to the Staples Motley's cross-country program. I feel we have such a team unity and everybody looks out for everybody and we just have so much fun together. I love cross-country here. Um, I'm going to miss it so much next year. It's, it's a great program. The team is great. We just, the unity on the team is like nothing else. So. Though their coach has never been a runner, he has been able to teach his athletes how to train their minds to overcome their bodies and route to five state championships in the past seven years. I wouldn't doubt him for a second about anything he tells us. Great motivator and teaches us not just things about cross country but also life experiences too. Well, he just knows what he's talking about. He knows his stuff. He's a great coach. I wouldn't, I think he's the best coach out there. I mean, he's a great motivator. He's, he researches this stuff and he knows we know that he knows what he's talking about. Uh, we've become very good friends, all of us do, and that is a lot more fun than even the meets. It's great when you come here and you do well and stuff, and when you win state championships, but the reason that we are successful win state championships is because everybody loves each other. 
Congratulations to the Staples Motley Boys and Girls Cross Country Program as the KSAX Athletes of the Week. Drew Keel, KSAX Eyewitness News. Athlete of the Week is brought to you by Alexandria Technical College. He'd like to ride off into the sunset, but it's not going to be that easy. We have one of the top, we have the top coach in the state, probably one of the best coaches ever. Bun, bun, get your right bun, alignments, bun, guys. Bun, Brownie team, Brownie team. Early in his career, he set a goal of winning 100 games, and over the years, he's been able to more than double that. Not to mention his 14 state tournament appearances and two state titles. Savvy as Coach Mater has brought success to this football program by the plethora of trophies displayed in this cabinet. But if you ask Coach Mater, it's not about the trophies, but the memories he's created for the community. It's the camaraderie that you have with the coaches and the special uh, uh, relationship you have with the athletes. Uh, you really get to know one another. Uh, you, uh, there's a lot of discipline that's involved and they have to do a lot of give and taking and uh, you, it, that, that's, that's what's going to be hardest uh, when I do retire. All, I mean, I don't see my uncles here every game. They like coming this every Friday night after work, watching how many team success. Throughout his career, he's instilled success in the Husky football program, coaching several collegiate level athletes, yeah. including Willie Sider, the 1993 Division III Player of the Year. That hasn't changed anything about the Husky game plan. Well, I think uh, every, every uh, game is our rival. I, I really believe everybody tries to beat us, and that's a feather in their cap if they can. And it's not too often that they can. But over the years, he's learned if he does get defeated, there's something to take out of a loss. I've learned that you can't win them all, and uh, you got to take out of uh, a defeat what you can, and then build on that and, and make the teams better. Though Coach Mater plans on walking away from the sidelines at the end of this season, the legend he's created will forever run with the Huskies. In Albany, Drew Keo, KSX, Eyewitness News. The West Central Area National Honor Society won't be able to assist the Red Knights in tonight's homecoming game, but they will be able to lift the spirits of their opponents. We have put together so far a fundraiser for Rozo, coming up with the idea that if we could raise a few hundred dollars for them, that, that would be awesome to give to them for flood relief, and we're just under $1,500 right now. Our, we've done nothing. We've been like a dead chapter pretty much, and we come this year with our new advisor, Ms. Leland, her second year doing this, and we're actually doing something, so I hope we show our community that we actually are a chapter that does something, and we do make a difference. The Rozo Rams will travel nearly six hours one way to play in tonight's football game. Win or lose, the gift they'll return home with will be appreciated by many. Just ask WCA principal Mel Onstead, who began his teaching career in the Rosal area. Well, I know several people that their homes were just completely destroyed 100% of that, and they have been displaced. There are still people to this day that are without electricity and are just basically um, hope, stumbling back into their homes. As the Knights work to keep their field in perfect condition, they also look to keep their undefeated record intact. While being a host, the Rams will never forget. The football game is only one small aspect of competition. However, we, the state of Minnesota, it's just kind of a sign that we all pull together and help each other out. In Barrett, Drew Keo, KSAX Eyewitness News. It's a battle that takes place every year on fields across the state. Today marked the first weekend of pheasant hunting season, which year after year is a day hunters mark on their calendars. I get pumped up every September when it rolls around, cold weather, colors are turning, because I really enjoy hunting and it's something I'll do for many a year. As they comb the fields in search of their feathery little friend that is patiently waiting for them to walk right over, these hunters are enjoying the walk they'll take time after time this fall. It's a great time just to basically get out in the outdoors and spend time with friends and family and uh, get out of the city basically. Uh, being from here, it's nice to come back and, and uh, spend time here and hunt and uh, have a great time. As Duke thoroughly examines the field, the time finally comes. And in that split second, there are some quick decisions to be made that will determine whether they have a good day or a bad day. Well, it's always that first uh, shock, the basically seeing if it's a rooster or a hen and if I can shoot at it, basically safety-wise. 
just hopefully uh, be able to hit it within five shots. And what well, you're a little flustered at first. I mean, you got to make a decision, uh, rooster or hen. And if you're quick enough, you get the safety off and you get a few shots off if you miss, like I did today, and try and hit it with the second. Um, just got to be on your toes. And on their toes they were, starting their pheasant hunting season off on the right foot. After an exhausting day in the fields, these hunters come home with their limit. On the field in Pope County, Drew Keough, KSAX, Eyewitness News. As they practice indoors for their regular season finale in the Fargo Dome, the West Central Area Red Knights know that if they make a return to the prep bowl, they'll have another indoor game later this season. Us seniors, we went on the 99 team when they went down the Metro Dome, and that was a great feeling, and all of us want to go there again. Well, we did it in ninth grade, and we were just little guys then, and uh, we just we were along for the whole ride. We got to watch the guys doing it. It takes a lot of work, and those guys did a great job then, and. We hope that we can get back there because it's an amazing experience. We didn't even play back then and it was an amazing experience. So to get back there and be able to play would be something unbelievable, I think. As the state's fifth ranked AA football team with a 7-0 record, they've already claimed at least a share of the Heart of Lakes conference title. They know if they want to make it back to the Dome, they need to continue playing Red Knight football. We go hard every day, Monday through Friday. That's something that the, our yeah, that's something that the coaches push us to do all the time. Because we play in a good conference where there's a lot of good competition, I think our guys realize every week we got to be ready. So um, uh, as far as keeping the kids focused, that really isn't a problem because I think they realize every week if you don't play um, good football, you can lose the football game. We had a motto this year. It's uh, dream big, focus small. It uh, basically teaches us to always keep our eye on the prize, which is going to the Dome again. But we got to focus day by day and game by day. Congratulations to the West Central Area Red Knight football team as they run off with this week's title of KSAX Athletes of the Week. Drew Keo, KSAX Eyewitness News. Athlete of the Week is sponsored by Farmers Agency in Elbow Lake. And they're off. Off to a fast start. And the reason is because when these Cardinals aren't in the books, they're between the boards. These kids, they eat, they breathe, they sleep, they live hockey. They, they love the game. It's Minnesota's game. As the two-time defending conference champions, Alexander Cardinals are currently 16-3, and three, looking to skate their way towards another banner season and into the dream of many high school hockey players. You go to the XL Energy Center during state tournament. It's pretty sold out down there. Uh, it's pretty crazy that week. Every, everyone's dream is to be in the state tournament for hockey. The kids worked very hard in the offseason, uh, set a lot of goals for themselves this year. We've won two straight conference championships. Uh, their goal is to win a third straight conference championship, and their goal is also to, uh, to get to the state tournament. All right, which allows our defensemen then to turn that play into a... The plans are drawn up, and the goals have been set. Now all the Cardinals have to do is hope their hard work pays off. It takes heart is what it takes, whether you're a Metro team, whether you're a, uh, an outstate team. Takes a lot of heart, takes a lot of desire, and uh, these kids have it. Well, we put in a lot of work this summer. We shot pucks as a team. We lifted all summer. We did camps. We did everything together as a team. We pushed each other. Uh, all year so far, we've been pushing each other, trying to make each other better. Congratulations to the Alexandria boys hockey team as the KSAX Athletes of the Week. Drew Keo, KSAX Eyewitness News. Practice makes perfect, and for this lady Main Streeter, the practice has paid off. First of all, you got to teach them the form, and really I think the key is using your legs in the proper follow-through, but a lot of it is concentration as well. And, you know, brand has got excellent form, she concentrates extremely well, and the whole team sees that and follows through with it. I do the same routine every time. I dribble four times, and then spin the ball in my hand, and just take a deep breath and shoot. You just have to concentrate. Rian Engen and the Sox Center girls basketball team rewrote the record books last week as Engen made 25 of her 27 free throw attempts. And the team went 46 of 57 from the line, both state records according to the Minnesota State High School League. 
But it was Angen's personal milestone of reaching 1,000 career points that brought the crowd to their feet. It was just awesome. I just can't even describe it. Because when I got the 1,000 point, it was kind of like, okay, I got it, I did it, you know? Just a sense of relief. And everyone in the stands just going wild. It was just amazing. Brianne's drive and determination has given her an A game on the court, as well as an A average in the classroom. And Brianne, as good as she is, she's probably the hardest worker on the team as well. So the other girls see that and see that even if you're a really good player, you still have to work hard at it. Congratulations, Brianne Engen, as the KSAX Athlete of the Week. Mark Anthony live from the Douglas County Courthouse. We'll be checking in with him throughout yeah. the evening. Also, reporter Drew Keel is on the road tonight covering several local races. His first stop is in Morris, where we join him live right now. Let's go to Drew. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'm live in Morris, where I'm joined by the District 11A state representative candidate He's a Republican, Tory Westrom. Tory, first off, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule this evening and talking to us about this year's election season. Um, now, Tory, with the, with the campaigning finally done and the polls closed, how do you feel your election campaign went this year? Well, I think it went real well. It uh, was a long, long campaign season with the uh, new redistricting that went on with all the congressional candidates up, all the constitutional offices up, uh, the U.S. Senate race. and the governor's race and, and all the Senate and the House in the state of Minnesota is up for re-election this year. So it's been a long campaign season. It's really went well, though. Uh, we're um, people will tell you that it can matter. And you, if you're within a few percentage points of each other, it doesn't take much of a swing. Mm -hmm. And we have another uh, Senate race uh, farther to the north up in the Brainerd Lakes area. And up there, of course, Don Samuelson. He's been in that one for, it seems like, forever. Uh, Rick and Greg, and earlier uh, we talked with Mr. Samuelson. All right, thanks, Mark. I'm here with State Senator Don Samuelson, who represents District 12. First off, Senator Samuelson, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet up with us this year. And uh, State Senator Samuelson, what do you, how do you feel your election campaign went this year? Well, it really went great. You know, we had wonderful volunteers. Uh, we have door knocked uh, every community uh, three and four times. Uh, We've been out in the countryside to make sure that we are able to visit the farm families uh, all over the district and those who choose to live out in the outskirts of town. And so it's just been wonderful, a wonderful experience. Uh, people, you know, people are very nice at the door. They're very kind, very courteous, even those who probably aren't going to vote for you. Yeah, but, and that's so important. I don't care what election you're in. When people have the courtesy to uh, at least greet you and say, I'm sorry, I'm for the other guy, that's fine. Uh, and and I, it just makes you feel very good that in our state, in my district, uh, is sort of Minnesota nice, and that's a good feeling. Senator Samuelson, in your own opinion, why do you feel you should be reelected? And if you are, what will some of your goals be? Well, you know, I think it's vitally important that we elect some people to the elect state senate that uh, uh, have some experience and, frankly, are in leadership positions. Uh, we have lost five very strong Senate members uh, in northern Minnesota who chose not to run again. So uh, we're kind of narrowing it down. As a matter of fact, in the legislature itself, there's going to be about a one-fourth turnover of new members uh, just from those who have retired, uh, decided not to run again, and so forth. So uh, I think it's important to elect people who have some experience and are in leadership position to help balance the budget and get some things done uh, in this next session. Senator Samuelson, you've been in politics for quite some time, and you probably belong to quite a few committees. What are some of those committees you belong to, and what are some of your responsibilities? Well, my main responsibility, I was elected president of the Senate in the last legislative session, and so uh, that uh, takes on a lot of responsibility in terms of signing all the bills that are passed by the legislature uh, prior to the governor's signature. All righty, thanks again. That's Mark Anthony reporting live from the Douglas County Courthouse. We have team coverage tonight. Drew Keel is back from Morris in Alexandria tonight out at the Holiday Inn. And let's go live now to Drew Keel. Drew? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Our travels have brought us back to Alexandria tonight where I'm at the Holiday Inn. Joined now by the District 11 Democratic representative for the Senate seat, Dallas Sams. Dallas, how is your night going so far? Well, it's going to be a long night, it looks like. We really haven't got a lot of information yet, so we're still waiting to get those precincts uh, reporting. 
uh, in here and see what uh, see what's going on. But it's been relatively slow, I, I suppose, because of the individual ballots out there that have to be counted. From what you've seen and what you've heard from your people, what are the numbers looking like? Are they in your favor? Um, it's it's coming in all over. It's looking good. Um, uh, you know, so far, uh, well, what was reported on TV, of course, that has us ahead. But then there's a lot to be reported yet. Some of the larger precincts. So um, we're certainly waiting to see what the outcome will be. Dallas, how do you think the state of Minnesota has adapted to Mondale stepping in for Wellstone in the in that race against Norm Coleman? Well, I think they've settled in pretty well. Uh, you know, it was such a short time; it didn't give uh, people a lot of time to look at the differences between the two candidates. They had the one debate, which I think was good. It kind of showed the differences between the two candidates. But evidently, the turnout is large, and so I think that people are concerned. And um, you know, it's important uh, this election at the national level, and not only for the state of Minnesota, but who determines the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. And the balance of power, exactly. How important is that in the 2002 election? Uh, with so many important issues going on in the world. Well, it's incredibly important. Uh, and you know, if, if you uh, normally like to have a checks and balances, if the Senate and the House and the, uh, the uh, presidency is all Republican, that's really not a checks and balance. It's, it's one party, uh, of course, controlling all three um, legislative branches out there. So I think that's a concern. And, and maybe that wasn't brought out enough you know, in, in the uh, US Senate candidate uh, forums. But uh, that is important for us. What is the atmosphere like in your party room over here? How many people are in there, and what, what are they feeling? Well, we've had people coming and going all night. It's a nice crowd, and uh, they're, uh, they're uh, excited about our local races here. Um, they're concerned about the uh, gubernatorial race, the U.S. Senate race. They're so close, and the night's long, and so uh, people are you know, coming and going, and there's quite a few in there yet that are sticking around and to see what happens. It's an important election, especially for greater Minnesota. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us again. Dallas Sands here at the Holiday Inn. Back to you in the studio, Mark. Okay, thanks a lot, Drew. Earlier we heard uh, Dallas Sams once again out at the Holiday Inn. Uh, Drew Keo is live out there once again, and he has George Castle. So let's uh, hear Drew and George Castle live. Yeah, thanks, Mark. We're back here at the Holiday Inn in Alexandria. Now I am joined by the Republican candidate for the District 11 Senate seat, George Castle. George, so far from what you've seen from the reports, not much in, but from what you've seen and from what you've heard of your peop from your people, how are the results looking to shape up for you? Well, I think it's way too early to tell. I do have to share with you that this is our 47th wedding anniversary, and we're also having uh, an anniversary party. Uh, we've probably been focusing more on that and on the results at this point. And that, you talk about it might be a long night. How long of a night could an election night like this be for you guys? Well, until we get the final result. What are some of the, what are some of the more important issues that you think need to be addressed? Well, I think certainly uh, a major issue is going to be the budget and dealing with the deficit. And personally, I think that we need to start making government more efficient. If we're going to really have the funding we're going to need for schools and uh, for roads and bridges and for taking care of our elderly, I think it's absolutely essential that government becomes more efficient. We're growing it faster. Essentially, we're growing it faster than uh, the cost of government is growing faster than uh, growth and inflation, and uh, ultimately, if that happens, you're going to consume all income. I've seen uh, demographers' projections uh, that if uh, we can't continue to grow at the current rate that we're growing, Republican running in uh, the seventh congressional district against Colin Peterson. Drew Keel is with uh, uh, Mr. Stevens live out at the Holiday Inn in Alexandria. Drew. Yeah, Mark, we're back here at the Holiday Inn live again. This time I'm joined by Republican candidate for the 7th District of the United States Congress, Dan Stevens. Dan, first off, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy night to, to talk with us about this year's election. Uh, you got a good heart about it being a long night, and so far from what you've seen, yeah. how do you feel about the numbers, and what do you think that it means for the state of Minnesota? Well, obviously, I would have liked my numbers to be better, although I'm heartened by the fact that even though we've got 40, 44 percent of the precincts in, that's not the same as the uh, the vote totals. I mean, we're looking at probably potentially a quarter of a million votes cast in this race, and um, you know it's going to go till the wee hours of the morning before we know what the the, uh, the numbers are going to speak at the end. And and I think the more conservative part of the district has yet to come in. Obviously, on a statewide total with uh, Norm Coleman's race, and I, I had the opportunity to go around the district on Norm's uh, drive. Uh, to the future tour. I also flew around with Norm last week, Moorhead, Fergus Falls, Wilmer, uh, East Grand Forks. And, and uh, you know, I'm heartened by the fact that, that people are looking to the future. 
they're looking for someone to go out in Congress, uh, in the gridlock, and start addressing the real problems out there. And Dan, exactly, you, you speak of these real problems. Uh, what, in your mind, in your opinion, what are some of the real problems in rural Minnesota? Well, first and foremost, you have this uh, uh, this farm bill that, that Colin touted as, as being the, the be-all, end-all of, of all farm bills. Uh, he said it was significantly better than the, the last farm bill. Well, let me tell you, well, I've talked to the farmers that are in the district. There's more holes in this farm bill than there is in Swiss cheese. And, and when you talk about equal payments on, to dairy farmers, you go out and talk to the dairy farmers in the 7th District or across the state of Minnesota that are getting less now for, the, for their milk than they got 20 years ago on, under these supposed equal payments. There is no equal payments. As long as we have these uh, antiquated federal milk marketing orders that are in existence, we have real issues in health care. We're, we're an aging society, and um, our population over age 65 is going to double by 2030, and our population over age 85 is going to triple. We've got to start addressing problems like I did in the Minnesota Senate here on long-term care, prescription drugs, and, and issues like that. And then, of course, rural development. We're losing our population out here in the rural area. 22 of the 35 counties in the, uh, in the 7th district here lost more than 10% of their population while Colin was in office and while the state of Minnesota grew 12% as a whole. So we need, we need uh, tax credits, technology, and transportation to, uh, to help revitalize the 7th district. If we don't get those things, you're going to see it even worse in the future. Real, bl real briefly, Dan, uh, Norm Coleman mentioned the Republican wave. Uh, how important is it for the Republicans to get control of this election, and what will it mean for the state? Well, obviously getting control, once you get in office, you're going to have to perform. If they perform to the people's satisfaction, then you're going to see more and more people coming over to the Republican side. It, it's just that simple. People are going to have to perform in office. They do that, then that's the way. Thank you very much again, Dan Stevens, joining me here at uh, the Holiday Inn in Alexandria, live on Election Night 2002. Back to you in the studio, Mark. Okay, thanks a lot again. Drew Keel reporting live here in Alexandria with Dan Stevens from the 7th District. His opponent, of course, is incumbent DFL.